Well, now it seems we have to stop the Orthrus in its tracks, advancing the Thargoid war effort. For this, I'm going to be using an Imperial Cutter that I've tricked up and hardened against what this Orthrus can throw at me. And for this, I have then called it the Orthrus Hunter. And that's the build I'm going to share with you today. So, let's take a look at the Orthrus, how to find it, and what the build is. Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. The Thargoid War rages on. And now, because the Indra ship has jumped to the front lines, it's all about holding off the Thargoid invasion before it actually happens. And that means going after the Thargoid Orthrus. Now, a bit of a different beast this, the Orthrus. No heart as such to target. It's shielded, however, so you've got to wear those shields down. And it will erode Guardian weaponry, if given the chance. And it's a little bit too trigger happy on the old shutdown field. So you're going to need a shutdown field neutralizer and lightning reflexes to use it. Now, as you can see here, I'm using rockets, good old missiles to give it a good pasting. And I've had varying levels of success. Some people are able to do it solo. We did it in a team with the usual crew that we have on a weekend for those streams. Even though, saying that, the difficult part was not really, I would say, destroying the Orthrus, because the Orthrus is typically unarmed, apart from its caustic guft and the shutdown field that, you know, it can, it can ooze out. However, the hard part is finding them. That is the real difficult part. I think we played for three hours, and at the end of it, we had seen five, by which three had done a runner and we were able to destroy two. But hey, that could change inside the game. The Orthrus does do a really good job as well of evading and then bringing in scouts as reinforcements. And if you're kitted out in a ship like mine, then you'll find yourself fighting scouts with missiles, which is not impossible by any shape or form. But it does mean they will distract you. The Orthrus will make its fast escape. So, the Orthrus then. We did destroy it. I actually also managed to get an Orthrus tissue sample, which I've got on my carrier, just in case. That's the bonus benefits of having a multi-limpet controller as well. However, again, here's another however. What I have found with this entire process is that, yes, you've got to be lightning on the shut down field neutralizer but be prepared to be disappointed because those Orthrus is 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 Orthrus is is the Orthrus the Orthri those Orthrus ships will do a runner at the slightest instance so how would you find an Orthrus well you're looking for a non-human signal source class 4 in a Thargoid alert system. Now these alert systems are yellow on the map and you can look at the Thargoid legends on the Thargoid war part of the galaxy map to help you out if you're stuck. Now don't be too surprised with the Orthrus. It's not quite as easy or straightforward as it makes out to be and like I said you know it'll take you a few times and a few attempts to get to the point where you're lucky enough to give it a good pasting with your missiles that you actually hit the thing. So here we are, we're in a team. It takes three of us. The points of interest spawn per commander so far in the game. Therefore, the more of you in a team, the more chances you are of getting a class four non-human signal source. And when you pop in, there'll be a probe there'll be a sensor or something like that. You can collect that if you so wish. And then what you'll find is, is the old Orthrus will pop in. Then it's up to you and your teammates to give it a good kick in as much as you possibly can. And once you've given it a good kick in, then you can pick up all the bits that it leaves behind. The problem with the big ships as well, they've got a turning circle of a small moon. So like you say, I've got my missiles, they're rearming at the moment, and then I'm going to start letting that Orthrus have it as much as I possibly can. Also, my beam lasers are keeping my temperature down, 
much as they could be possibly kept down, and we're going to carry on giving it a good pasting. Once the shield is down, however, the Orthrus does start using its shutdown field neutralizer, or shutdown field, which you have to neutralize with your shutdown field neutralizer a bit more regularly. We've had it used three times on us so far, because, well, perhaps we're just unorganized, that sort of thing. But either way, it is an option. So what's my cutter build for this? Well, I shall share it with you. Okay, so here we have the build of my Orthrus Hunter. So, I've got a beam laser at the top. It's class 4. Uh, it is engineered as well. Engineered modifications are overcharged weapon. Yes, I know it really should be long range um, to get the benefit of this as well. And I've got thermal vent. I've got enhanced AX missile racks, which will not degrade in the guff of the Orthrus. So I've got two 3Ds of those. Um, again, I got two then enhanced AX missile racks, there and there. And then I've got um, an AX pre-engineered one, that from a, a recent community goal with the high capacity magazines there as well. So I've got turrets on four. Obviously the beam laser is gimbaled, and these are just fixed. But then again, the Orthrus is big enough, you can just let rip, if you know what I mean. Okay, and there's no real hearts to shoot, you just get the shields down and just let rip at it. Best in a team. With the utility mounting, I've got a shutdown field neutralizer. Now as we've seen, the Orthrus will fire that off several times to disable you. And it is a bit of a pain. And there is a way of... A assigning the shutdown field neutralizer to a hotkey. Got my enhanced Xeno scanner, although as yet I haven't scanned one. Got my caustic heat sink, uh, caustic launcher, sorry. Uh, heat sink ammo capacity up to seven. Got one of those. Got a standard caustic sink launcher for that caustic damage. And I've got a pre-engineered heat sink there. Thank you very much. That's got four with the existing three on that heatsink launcher as well. Into the core internals, we're looking at reactive surface composite to help against explosions. Got that modified up with deep plate, heavy duty armor to the nines. Then I've got thrusters, dirty drive tuning. Got my frame shift drive, whatever. Got to jump around, didn't you? And then my life support. In case anything goes horribly wrong, I've got the ability that I know if my canopy is shot out, I've got 25 minutes on that. Um, my weapon distributor, I've got it tuned for engine focus with clustered capacitors. Don't know why, I should have really should have gone for weapon for that. Anyway, but never mind, it's much of a muchness. Um, my sensors and a fuel tank. Now it gets interesting here. Yes, I've got a universal limpet controller at the top. My hull reinforcement is there. Again, heavy duty deep plating. I've got a Guardian Hull reinforcement package. Now this is giving me 5% caustic resistance as well. Uh, module reinforcement, standard, not Guardian. Uh, another Guardian Hull reinforcement, up in that caustic resistance. Got my weapon stabilizer so I can have six um, anti-Xeno weapons on there. Again, Guardian Hull reinforcement for that caustic resistance. Now don't forget, this is not going from what we understand, right, the Guardian Hell reinforcement does not degrade in the causticness like the other stuff does. It's not going to last forever, but it's not so bad, and it does give you that caustic resistance. Whether that changes in time or not, I don't know, but as they're making this video, that's what it's like. Hell reinforcement, hell reinforcement. Got my 4E cargo rack here, all right? Another module reinforcement. I don't know why I've got that detailed surface scanner just on the off chance, left over from something else, and a planetary approach suite. If I am absolutely stuffed, I need to go and land on the planet to repair. And that is basically the build. So, it's all about the missiles, really. I would say, all about the missiles. The difference between them and them, the rate of fire is slightly better on those engineered ones, and they are smaller. Only slightly, with 0.7 against 0.5. And again, with the 3Ds, you know, they're 0.5. So, that is the Orthrus Hunter. 
So there you have it, my Orthrus hunting build. Hmm, it's not perfect by any means. And the fact that you have to go out and literally hunt the Orthrus and stop the invasion basically before it's happening, as opposed to what I think we've all been doing, which is reacting to it, is certainly a novel approach. Let me know in the comments if your build's any better, or if you've got a special knack of finding the Orthrus in the alert systems. I'd love to know. I've been Ricardo. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.